I like that song. <laughs> the Friar Place, the theme music to the Friar Place. Doom, 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 doom. I love that. Welcome to the Friar Place. I'm Irving Fry, the host here at the Friar Place where the conversations are fire. Y'all come on in the room. Don't see anybody logged in as of yet. Actually, there's one person. You're in. You're right on time. Y'all come on in. Uh, throw something in the comments. Let us know you're here so we can interact with you this uh, this great Friday. We're here in New Jersey and it snowed. Uh, we got where I am, where we live. I think it was, I went out and shoveled this morning. It was probably about four inches of snow. About my guesstimation, I'm pretty good at guessing how much snow is out there because I've had to shovel snow since I was a kid. Um, I've been in snow most of my life. New Jersey, grew up in New Jersey, went to college in Nebraska, first nine years in the NFL and New England. So I'm, I'm very familiar, <laughs> as some of you are probably, with snow. So it was about four inches of snow this morning. Um, and unfortunately, you know, you've seen the promo. Mike Rozier, my friend, Heisman Trophy winner, supposed to be, hey, mom, how you doing? Is supposed to be with us today, but the snow kept him away. Uh, he lives down in South south jersey um i live in mid to south jersey but he lives in south south jersey and they usually get hit pretty hard so when i talked to him this morning um they had somewhere between six and eight inches of snow so he was gonna cuss me out if i asked him to, to you know try to suck it up and get here uh regardless so we're gonna bring him back next week what's up Vinny? snow out yeah it's a snow out that's what Vinny says <laughs> Let me throw him up there. Vinny says it's a snow out. It's not really a snow out, but there's some snow. Yeah, we, we got snow. We definitely have snow. And uh, so it's messing up, messing up my show for today. You just got to kind of be ready for anything in this kind of business, I guess. It's, uh, it's showing me that I always have to be prepared for the unknown, prepared to wing it if I have to wing it. Um, we're not going to wing it today though. Today though, I do have, uh, someone that's going to come on. He's going to come on a little bit later, but there's a couple of things that I want to talk to us about. Hey, Rashida, good to see you. Hey, pastor. She says, good to see you. Uh, Papa Oakman. That's, that's my uncle, o uncle Chucky. What's going on, man? I, I don't know if I've ever seen you log into the fryer place and interact with the fryer place. It's good to see you. You, you, you know what? Unk, you must be bored. <laughs> You're tired and you just don't have anything to do. <laughs> so I appreciate you spending your time with me. Yeah, he says, morning, Irving. It's see, you're, you're all the way in Washington, the state of Washington, and it's morning there. It is 12 noon here. But uh, we appreciate you joining us today, the, 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 the greatness of modern technology. So he, he, a couple of things I want to talk about before my guest comes in. I told him to come on in a little bit later on. Hey, what's going on, Richard? Good to see you, bro. 
Always good to see you. Let me throw you up there. Get up there. Come on. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh-huh. And uh, Vinny, Vinny said he went from Tom's River to Mount Holly and back. Snow doesn't stop work. Well, no, it doesn't stop some of us. It actually stopped me from going to the gym this morning because when I got up uh, at 445 to try to get to the gym by 6, when I opened the door and looked outside, it was snowing profusely and there was a lot of snow in the driveway, a lot of snow in the car. And I'm like, mm, by the time I finish doing all of this, I'm going to be late to my session. So we called it. Uh, a, we that's a, that's a win for the snow today. We didn't make it to the gym. Hey, Sister Sally, how you doing? Good day. Good to see you. Is this Anthony Still? Anthony Still. Irvin, this is Squid. <laughs> Stuart wouldn't return me on to your podcast. Good seeing you again. Glad to see you doing good. I'm doing all right. Um, yeah, never had a bad day in my life, you know? Good to see you, uh, uh, Squid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're uh, This is back old school, back from the hill this is when i was childhood one of my uh and hey chuck is on the line squid um you see him in the comments as let me look at look at it it says papa oakman that's chucky squid and chucky were, were, were good friends oh, we were all good friends up on the hill good to see you man wow this is great where you get a chance to uh reminisce i know that's what facebook does and instagram does it kind of puts you in contact and keeps you in contact with people that you haven't seen many, uh, maybe for years. Hi, Kim. How are you? Good to see you. Thanks for joining us today. I'll get this. Come on up here. Yeah, my stuff doing work right. Not quite cold enough to snow here in Houston. Oh, well, okay, uh, Richard. Are you um, you're like rubbing it in? Is that what you're doing? It's yeah. You don't get much snow in Houston. I know you do get snow, but not like up here in New Jersey. And I'm I'm sure you're glad you're in Houston. If the Lord would let me leave New Jersey, trust me, I would be gone. <laughs> I would I would be gone. Um, but you got you got to bloom where you planted. So stay here in Jersey and do the best I can with what I have until the Lord calls me home or says that I can go somewhere else. Amen. Um, but yeah, you know, had Mike Rozier planned to come on in. He was going to come in. The studio, I was going to have him here. That way we were going to eliminate any chances of things going wrong in terms of any reception that he might have with his internet, wherever he was. So I was going to bring him in the studio and we're going to sit here. We're going to chop it up. It was going to be really good. Mike and I go all the way back to high school, all the way back to high school. And we were best friends in college still. He's, I consider him a brother. He's like a brother to me, one of the brothers I've never had. And uh, we've kept in touch all these years. We communicate all the time. And it is, when it does happen, it's going to be a great, you don't want to miss this. <laughs> it's going to be a great conversation. He, that man can cut up and I can cut up right along with him. So um, we're going to have a good time. Good afternoon, Sister Sally. Good afternoon. Good to see you. I think I said hi earlier. Yeah, she said good afternoon. She hit, hit the button twice. He said, acknowledge me. I'm here. What are you doing? <laughs> Better say hi to me. Hi, Sister Sally. <laughs> so we were going to have a great conversation. So it snows or it started snowing last night this morning. Messed up. Just messed up. Messed up everything. And I knew that he wasn't going to be able to make it. And I sent the promo out, you know, bragging about who I was going to have on the show and how exciting it was going to be. And it was going to be a, a, a festive conversation, a fire a conversation of fire, you know, just what the fireplace is all fireplace is all about. And now here we are, we have snow and he can't make it. And I, it just started to remind me, you know, we're, we're here in a new year, you know, second, second, almost third week going into the third week of the new year. And, um, you know, some of us have made some decisions. We talked about uh, New Year's resolutions last week. And some of us have made some decisions to make some changes and to do some big things. Hey, Vanetta, what's going on? Good afternoon. So we made some decisions to do some 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 different things, to make some changes in our lives, to 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 do better, to go better, to go higher, to go to another level. And uh 
I've done that as well in some areas of my life. And one of the areas is, is this area of podcasting. We're, we're, we're going to be doing some real significant, some real big things here this year that are, that are already in motion. The wheels are already in motion and we're going to release uh, some, some new stuff uh, this year. So it's going to be big. And I wanted to start off the year right. You know, we talked about New Year's resolutions last week, but I wanted to start the year off right with a conversation with Mike and myself. And then lo and behold, snow comes. So, so what I thought about at that point was, listen, I'm sure I'm not the only one who has made a decision to move in a certain direction, has set a goal, set a target, and is shooting for that target, trying to reach that, that, that goal, trying to fulfill that, uh, that purpose in this season. And yet and behold, right off the bat, I get resistance. Right off the bat, uh, something happens to try to keep it from happening. And I just want to encourage anyone who's listening right now, if, if that's happening or if, or if it, and it and if it hasn't happened, it will happen <laughs> with what it is you're trying to accomplish. I want you not to be discouraged. I want you to continue to be encouraged because when you have obstacles trying to keep you from reaching your goal, trying to deter you, trying to uh, discourage you from reaching your goal, I want you to just know that that means you're on track. That means you're on the right path and you're doing the right thing because when we make up in our minds that we're going to operate and live and accomplish the things that God has destined and purposed inside of us to accomplish those things that we desire to do that God that put inside of us to do the enemy. He's not just going to sit back and, and watch us walk into our destiny. He's not going to do that. He's not going to sit back and clap. Yay, he finally found out what he's supposed to do, what she's supposed to do, and they're on their way, and they're on the right path. He's not going to do that. No, he's going to start working against you. He's going to start working against me. He's going to do what he can do, whatever he can do, the enemy, to keep us or to discourage us or to distract us from reaching our goal. And I preached this in one of the sermons a while ago at the church, you know, the closer and, th and this is what I'm experiencing right now with Mike not being able to be here. And Mike will be here. He'll be here. It's just that it snowed. So something happened out of my control that uh, is keeping me from uh, doing what I believe needs to be done actually when I want it done. But it's all in God's time and it's going to happen. But and I could have gotten discouraged today. I could have come on today like I did two weeks ago when I when I had gotten my booster shot and I was sick. I could have come on today and said, you know what? Uh, we're not going to have a show today. Mike's not coming. It snowed. So I'll see you all next week. I could, I could have done that. I could have done that. But no, I'm not discouraged. I'm actually encouraged. Why? Because I know that the enemy doesn't want. Some what's happening here, particularly with the fryer place, he doesn't want it to happen. And the ideas that God has given me and the vision that God has given me for this, he doesn't want me to sit or he's not going to sit quietly, I should say, and allow me to just walk into my destiny in this regard uh, without any resistance. He wants to dis discourage. He wants to distract. He wants to destroy what God purposes for and in our lives. So yeah, I could have been discouraged. I could have canceled the show. <laughs> Vinny, Vinny says, knock them down one by one. I, I like that, Vinny. Knock them down one by one. You can't get them all, just get them one at a time. <laughs> knock them down one by one. So understand this, the closer, here's what I was talking about earlier when I mentioned the sermon that I preached at the church. The closer you get to your goal, the harder it is, the harder it is to get to your goal. Let me say that again. The closer you get to your goal, the harder it is to get to your goal. What do I mean by that? Uh, they call they there's something in the NFL they call the red zone. It's it's the last, the final twenty yards before you reach the end zone, before you score, before you reach the goal. It's the final twenty yards. Football field is a hundred yards long, but that last twenty yards. 
before an offense reaches the goal line is called the red zone. Why is it called the red zone? Well, because you can you can pass the ball and move, you know, with pretty much ease and and run to the left and throw down the field to the right and put it, run a screen in the middle of the field for that first 80 yards. But then when you get to the end zone, for some reason, and those of you who watch football, for some reason, that last 20 yards, it's harder to score. It's harder to reach the goal from that last 20 yards than it is from 80 yards out. Why is that? Because the closer you get to your goal, <laughs> the harder it, is, harder it is, I'm sorry, the harder it is to get your goal, to get to the goal. Because in the red zone, you see things you've never seen before. They bring in specialists that haven't been in the game up to that point to come in just specifically to keep you from reaching the goal. They have specific game plans uh, tailored to stop you when you get to the red zone. Yeah, the opposition does. So when you get into the red zone, that last part, that that final, final move, that final distance to get to the goal, the harder it is to get to the goal. So for some of us, you, me, I'm talking to some, I know, I know I'm talking to somebody right now who's listening and who will be listening. You're in the red zone. That's why, not let's go Buffalo. <laughs> why are you talking about, let's, Richard's talking about let's go Buffalo. I'm not talking about Buffalo, Richard. What are you, <laughs> I'm talking about life. I'm synonymizing life, giving you an illustration about something you do know to help you with something spiritual that we don't sometimes understand. And that is the fact that when you get resistance and things start coming and happening that maybe you haven't seen before, or you you're feeling like, you know, uh, that that stuff is trying to keep you from moving forward. You're in the red zone. You're in the red zone. You have to keep going. You can't Get discouraged. You have to be encouraged. Why? Because you only have 20 yards to go. You've already come 80 yards. Don't stop now. Don't give up now. Keep pressing. Keep pushing. Keep going. And you will get the victory. You will score. You will reach your goal. So that that came to mind today when it snowed and when I talked to Mike and Mike was unable to come and I wasn't trying to force him to come. He's, he's not comfortable driving in the snow that, uh, that fell. I'm not going to try to manipulate him or try to convince him to come. No. And God forbid I did convince him to come and something happened to him. I'm not doing that. No, we deal with it. We are, we do deal with it based on what it is. Be encouraged and keep moving forward, right? Keep moving forward. Touchdown. Yeah. Vinny said touchdown. Um, watch this. Now, two weeks ago, <laughs> two weeks ago, <clears throat> excuse me, I came on. I was on for, I think it was like five minutes because I had uh, just gotten my Moderna. I had Moderna vaccine, the first one, Moderna vaccine, the second one. And I had just gotten my booster shot for Moderna. My God, my God. Y'all, I'd never, I had never felt that. There's only one other time I felt that bad in my life. And that was when I was about 23, I think I was 23 years old. And I had, I had food poisoning and I literally thought I was going to die. It was seafood food poisoning. And I literally thought I was going to die. That's the only time I felt that bad before I was shivers and sweating and couldn't breathe and couldn't just coughing and couldn't sleep and all of that was going on last week. That happened for about four days, almost five days. It was crazy. I thought I was trying to get a COVID test because I thought I had COVID. I thought the shot gave me COVID. Good gosh. It was, it was horrible. Um, but here's, here's why I bring that up. And this is what we're actually going to be talking about later. I want to hear what uh, my friend, when I bring him in, he's going to call about um, in another 10 minutes or so. He's going to call in. Um, I want to hear what, because he's he's good. He's wisdom. He's got wisdom. He's lived. He's been through like me. Um, and he's got experience, life experience. And uh, he speaks from his life experiences. So um, I I want to, what's happening right now, I want to talk about what's going on with this Omicron uh, 
variant of COVID-19. You know, our church right now is virtual. We've gone virtual because that's what we had to do before when we were mandated by the governor. Uh, But now it's because of this Omicron variant. There are people in my life that I know, friends, uh, close acquaintances, I should say, who are safe people like myself. They don't go anywhere. They really don't do anything. Um, If they do go anywhere, they wear their masks. They're clean people. They wash their hands. They, they, they were doing that and washing the, you know, keeping themselves clean before it was mandated for COVID-19. They would, that's something we should do anyway, wash your hands and wash your face and stay out of people's face and, and, you know, make sure you keep yourself clean. We should be doing that anyway. But there are people who you would, you would think who would be very unlikely to uh, contract COVID-19. And up until now, they hadn't. But now they have. And it's it's unbelievable. How you doing, uh, Elder Webb? You're, you're awake. <laughs> I'm just going to clown with you. <laughs> you're awake right now. I told, uh, I'm, I'm going to get back to what I'm talking about. But we have a Thursday morning prayer. I'm going to clown you right now, Elder Webb. Um, so just hold on. Don't get mad because this is just what I'm going to do. It's my show and I can do what I want to do. All right. So you just watch and listen. So we have a, <laughs> my mom said, I've come 80 yards. Sometimes the other 20 is hard. That's right. I've come 80 yards. Sometimes the other 20 is hard. It is. That last 20 is the last mile of the way. <laughs> That's that song. Come to the last mile of the way. Yeah. Um, so we have Thursday morning. <laughs> Elder Webb said wide awake. Yeah. Okay. Today you're wide awake. Um, or right now you're wide awake. We have Thursday morning prayer at 6 a.m. Our church members do. And um, uh, Deacon S. Webb, Elder Webb's wife, is usually on on the prayer call. And this particular uh, past, or yesterday, yesterday morning, I asked her, well, where's Elder Webb? She said, he sleep. <laughs> well, where was he last time you were? He sleep. <laughs> Well, where, was he, where was he the last time you were on before that? He sleep. <laughs> so I told her, I said, you know what? Elder Webb is going to, he's going to make it to heaven. And then he's going to sleep through all of eternity. <laughs> he <gonna sleep. laughs> he's not going to be able to enjoy any of heaven. He's not going to enjoy any of the, <laughs> any of what goes on in heaven. Praise and worship God and how things are going to be great. No crying, no dying, no no, no flesh, no, no bad attitudes, none of that, because he's gonna be sleep. <laughs> Elder Webb, you're gonna sleep all eternity away. <laughs> all right, let's uh, Vinny. Best thing for COVID is is the vaccine and wings from wings and things. Okay, Vinny, I'll I'll mention wings and things. All right. <laughs> My guest is coming in in five minutes. So yes, wings and things. You can <laughs> wings and things. In Mount Holly, you can uh, go through Uber Eats or DoorDash or Grubhub and order Uber Eats. I mean, I'm sorry, Uber Wings and Things. Great wings, yeah, and great things. It's 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 good stuff, y'all. So check it out. Those of you who are in the area, go to DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats, Wings and Things, and they will deliver. And... Uh, Vinny will be happy. We'll be happy. <laughs> be on. <laughs> Elder Webb said, I'll be asleep, but I'll be on a bed of gold. All right. I got you. That's cool. Yeah. But you still going to miss heaven. <laughs> you going to miss all of heaven. But yeah, this whole um, Omicron variant, it's serious. It's, it's, it's as if, it is in the air, not like Delta or some of the original strains or variants. But as this thing has mutated, it's obviously become more contagious. And people who are really, really have been and are being cautious and abiding by the standards that have been set um in terms of socially distancing themselves and to, to, in terms of 
uh, washing their hands in terms of uh, wearing their masks. They're doing those kinds of things, but they're still contracting this new variant, Omicron. So it's almost as though, you know, it's not a matter of if you contract Omicron, it's just when. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, that's how we're going to develop or move into herd immunity is because everybody's going to catch it (laughs) because there's, I mean, there's not too many people that I have talked to that I've been talking to that I frequent over the past year and a half since COVID has been out almost two years that have not contracted who just recently contracted it. So um, we need to be wise about this, continue to be careful, continue to look out for yourself uh and um and yes mom <laughs> mom said he was sick and would not accept my tea i did he's drinking it now <laughs> i did accept your tea mom yes i did and i still drink your tea i have a cup of that tea and those throat lozenges every night before i go to bed you can ask serena yep i sit in the bed uh, and watch TV. That's my last thing I do before I fall asleep. Is I have a cup of that tea, and one of those, or I put a few of those uh, cough drops in the tea, and I drink it. Make it scalding hot, and I drink it. I uh, want those cough drops to melt, and then I go to sleep, and I wake up feeling good. Yeah, I feel, it's, it's it was crazy how bad I felt uh, after getting the booster, but then once you know, once everything. I stopped once everything subsided. Once I got on the other side of it, I felt great. I feel great. So it's, uh, and I'm not saying, like I said the other day, I'm not saying don't get your booster. I'm not saying don't get vaccine. I'm not, no, not at all. Um, again, it's like wearing a helmet in a football game. You, you would not go in a football game without, you wouldn't play a football game without wearing a helmet. Now the helmet doesn't stop you from getting a concussion because if helmets stopped professional players or even players, high school, uh, you know, younger players, Pop Warner, if it stopped them from getting concussions, then nobody would get a concussion, correct? Yeah. So helmets don't stop us from getting a concussion, but helmets do keep us from cracking our skull open while you're playing the game. It keeps you from killing yourself. And that's how the vaccine is. If you're going to be in the game, if you're going to be in the game of life, if you're going to go out and you're going to participate, you're going to be around people, you need to protect yourself. It may not keep you from contracting the virus, but it will keep you from, for the most part, it keeps you from killing yourself. Krista. <laughs> ha ha, you cracked me up. I'm funny. Okay. All right. Oh, there he is. Here comes my guest right on time. Let me bring him in. Uh, so you all can know who this is, or he is. I'm going to assi- assign him to guest one. Then I'm going to bring him in right here. There he is. V to the Cly. <laughs> you hear me, man? Hey, man. What's going on? Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you just can fine. You. you can hear me? What's the deal? You can't hear me? Turn your speaker on. <laughs> magic. magic i told y'all he gonna cut up <laughs> he it's said ah it's magic. What's going on, <laughs> he called me now wait a minute the people never heard you first of all brothers and sisters those of you who are watching, <laughs> hope my sisters i'm look i'm talking i've been talking about covid and that's what we're going to talk about a little bit about ricky my sister just put it here uh you need to take the sinus meds I gave you. Cause, uh, but anyway, before we go to that, y'all, this is my brother from another mother. We college teammates, college friends, met him in college, been friends ever since. Ricky Simmons, Ricky V. Clyde Simmons, I'm going to say. Ricky was on the first show of the Friar Place. So if you go back, and it's still posted, Ricky, my sister Hope says, hey, Ricky, uh, Hey, Hope, what's that? <laughs> he was he was my first guest. He started, kicked off the Friar Place. That's that's how much he means to me. I wanted him to be the first one on the Friar Place. 
Uh, so good to see you, man. <laughs> you, man, feelings are mutual. What's going on with ain't you? Ain't nothing. Tell, the, hey, <laughs> tell the people why I call you what I call you, man. <laughs> you tell the people why you call me what you call me. Okay, it's a quick story, and then we'll get on. <laughs> you know, <laughs> in college, right? Oh, Lord. Listen, don't tell it all. Get your happy on. Don't tell, tell it all. No, no, I ain't going to tell it all. But hey, in college, you know, we uh, we, we named Irvin Smurf. and Because uh, he was always getting his Smurf on, you know. <laughs> That's, that was a dance, y'all, for those of y'all who don't know what that is. Smurf. <laughs> and uh, tell you something. When he became a pastor, he, he we just added the pastor to it. <laughs> <laughs> Master Smurf, Keenan, this brother Keenan, I did his wedding. Uh, hey, Keenan, how you doing, bro? <laughs> he said, "Welcome What's back." Going on? Yeah, he said, "Welcome back, Ricky." I, we went to um, there's a, a group that I do a pregame, the pregame game, pregame show. I'm sorry for the um, or analysis for the Philadelphia Eagles called the Green Legion. I work with the Green oh, Legion, wow. and uh, okay. we went out to the Las Vegas game this year when the Eagles played uh, the Raiders out in Vegas. And we were at Caesars and it's, it's when we do our show, it's like a, um, a big, a big tailgate party. So we do it live and there's like thousands of people there. We do it live here at home at the, uh, Xfinity center. There's hundreds of people there. So when we were out in Vegas, everybody was out there that flew out on the charter plane with us. And I did a wedding. I did Keenan's wedding. I performed his wedding, uh, at that tailgate right before we did the show. So it was awesome. It was awesome. And Keenan, awesome. yeah, Keenan has been following us ever since. Um, so yeah, man, listen, I was telling the people like last week, uh, I went and got my booster shot, my Moderna booster shot. And okay. bro, it threw, I was on my face on my back <laughs> for four days. It just, oh, really? it, it, yeah. When I got my original Moderna shot, the first one was cool. Nothing. My second shot, my arm just a little sore right there where you got the where the needle went in my arm. No problem though. But man, I went and got this booster, Moderna booster from the same place. Um, and man, it was like two hours later, I was thrown into a loop. I'm talking about sweats and chills. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I couldn't breathe. <laughs> Coughing all over the place. I had to stay, you know, vertical most of the time because I couldn't lay down. It was absolutely ridiculous. Now, I'm not telling people not to get the booster because everybody's affected differently. But um, this whole uh, Omicron variant, I don't know how it is out there in Nebraska. Ricky's out in Nebraska, y'all. I don't know how bad it is out there or how people are responding to it. But, man, it's all over the place out here. And people that I know, like yourself, Ricky, being careful and, and yeah. wearing the mask and socially distancing. But they're still catching it. They're, they're still yeah. being infected. Yeah. Well. You know, Irv, first of all, you know, I'm glad you're okay. First, let's get that. Well, I'm glad too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm very glad of that because, I mean, I don't know anybody else named Pastor Smurf. So, <laughs> so, but I will say this, man, uh, it's it's everywhere, like you said. Um, I, um, I don't tell anyone how to live their life. Um, all I say is if you're going to, you know, if you're going to, play Russian roulette, that's fine. But, you know, that's your choice. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, I personally, you know, I went on and got vaccinated. And uh, next month, I'm going to go and get my booster, you know. Uh, I, uh, but my logic is a lot different from anybody else's. I mean, and I'll share my logic right quick. I want I want to hear that. Listen, uh, Krista, Krista says, get your happy on, dog. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with you, Christy? You, you already what it is. She said, get your happy on, dog. Happy on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, man. Well, you know, I was always talking to different people, friends of, you know, that were that already took the shots. Mm -hmm. And uh, and one day it kind of hit me when um I got to thinking, man, you smoked cocaine for 25 years. That ain't key. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where, where is this going? <laughs> Why not take a shot? But, that was my was my logic for getting but, back. But you know what? It's it's the same, you know, it's almost the same logic. And you got, you know, you just have to be careful 
in, you know, when somebody asks me for my opinion, then I'll give them my opinion. But you have to be right, careful right. about uh, putting or or yeah, pushing your opinion on someone else. Oh, but, absolutely. But you're, but, I agree. Right, but you're but you're absolutely right because a lot of the people that I know that I've had conversations with, uh, or I'm not going to say a lot of the people, some of the people I should say that I know, and and there and these people are people I'm talking about actually who are in a gen- the generation after us, the younger generation. Okay. Right. Because a lot of them, most of the ones that I've talked to, don't want to get the vaccine, haven't been vaccine- vaccinated, and haven't really, in my opinion, given given a reasonable or valid reason why they don't or should not or won't get vaccinated. Um, but yet and still, they're passing a joint with one another. They're drinking off the same bottle with one another they're, they're mm-hmm. sleeping with one another and right. so if you're going to do that <laughs> yeah well like like i said Herb, i mean i'm i'm in agreement with you mm-hmm. i personally i don't i don't force my opinion on anyone you know matter of fact you know if if, if you don't want to do it that's fine but i need 50 feet you I know need 50 i mean feet, I, yep. <laughs> you know, i mean i'm not i'm not you know like i said i'm not against nobody making their own decisions because right. they got to live with it. But I'm just saying, I mean, if you don't get vaccinated, you know, it's just kind of strange. What I'm seeing in the statistics is showing that once the hospitals are filling up with people without vaccinations that right. are coming up positive. Right. Well, you know what I mean? If you really don't want to get a, a, a vaccinated, well, when if it hits you, why are you run into the hospital? I mean, I, I, I mean, like I say, I'm not trying to. I'm not a doctor. I didn't play one on TV. Right. I'm just using common sense. I mm-hmm. mean, uh, this is you know, this is a world we live in. You can do what you choose, but I'm just trying to, as my homeboy in Greenwood, Texas, Billy Barry would say, I'm trying to stay in the game. Billy Barry. <laughs> Billy Barry. Billy Barry said, I'm trying to stay in the game. So, so what's it like out there in Nebraska? Uh, I mean, right here in here in New Jersey and Philly, the the you know it's it's spiked even higher, and there are more people mm-hmm. being infected than there were in the original uh, onset of COVID. So the numbers are even greater now. I mean, they're sending. I have a, I have a home home test coming to me. There's the government is sending tests to to homes. You know, it's tough. Right, you go right. out and try to get a test. You can't find a test in any of right. the uh, uh, um, in, in any of the places where you normally can find one, particularly the drugstores. You can't find a test. But now the government is actually sending tests to the homes because there's so many people here on this side of the country who are being affected, infected, I should say, by mm-hmm. uh, COVID-19, particularly the, the Omicron variant. What's happening out there in Nebraska? Same thing, no different. Really? really? Same thing. Really? Yeah, I mean, that a lot of people are just anti whatever, you know, and they're not really? with getting the vax. But I mean, I mean, masks, I still wear a mask, you know. Um, a lot of people I see that out here, they don't. But, you know, you'll never catch me saying, hey, man, you need to get a mask on. Or you, I don't do that, man, because like I said, Everybody going through stuff, Irv, mm-hmm. and I ain't really trying to figure out or play psychic and try to figure out what's on their mind, man. You right, know? I mean, right. But it, it is serious. I know that. I mean, people are dying. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's all the proof I need. Well, what what is on everybody's mind is, I mean, you can't you can't avoid it. You can't not think about it. It's all over the TV. Right. It's all over the place. There's people, if you haven't right. been directly infected uh or affected, I should say, by someone, you know, if it hasn't mm-hmm. happened to you directly, whether it's a spouse, a child, uh, yourself, you, you're you one person or two people away from being affected by it. So it's real, Correct. and it's, it's, it's everyday conversation with everybody. It's just some of us are choosing to not see the reality of it, almost like hey, it's a man. facade or something, yeah. I'll say it like this, man. Uh, you know, that's their choice. If they want to play it that way, that's cool. But, you know, after the fact, I'm probably not the right person to come to with that woe is me story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm See, I told you. 
Then he said, I just, I say, just do the right thing and be respectful. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a choice, man. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I ain't trying to tell, man, I need an eight day week and a 30 hour day to deal with my own life. <laughs> and what I ain't it, getting but four what, and seven. So it don't leave me no room to try to run somebody else's. What they say, sweep around your own front door before you try to sweep yeah, around yeah, my own. Man. Yeah. yeah <laughs> take take yeah. Six, 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 six months to mind your own business and six months to leave other people's business alone. <laughs> Man, look at him. And I'm talking about R-A-T now, not right, right now. Right now. Hurry up. Yeah, right now. Hurry up. You my man. You say you still here? What? You, you, hurry up. Yeah. You know, you're behind gone with your feet waiting on. <laughs> oh, y'all, this is what we do. Y'all, this is what we do. This is my man, pots and pans, bottles and cans right here. Vicky, Ricky, I said Vicky, Ricky V. Claude Simmons. Hey, but look here, little dude. I want to, um, I got to say something right quick before we go any further, man. Um, I hope WMK is listening, man. I want to give y'all a big shout out because I really appreciate the work that they put in, man. We about to get this doc wrapped up here in another okay. week or so. I'm very excited. I want to thank you personally, Irv, for being such a big part of this documentary, man. I mean, you, you made time for me. I think. You were coming back from Vegas, actually, mm -hmm, and when mm -hmm. you that, I just I never really got to officially thank you, and I wanted to do oh, that today. Man, look, come on, bro. That's that's what we do. That's what we do. Listen, let you, I missed you. Say say it again. Still have to say thank you. Oh, you're welcome, bro. Listen, that's what I do. But Hunt said, "Hey, David Hunt, good to see you. But happy New Year to you too, Reverend." <laughs> Bless you, yeah. Bless you. So, so it's it's like last night I was writing my sermon, and you, you know, we were trying to do some things together, and I'm getting ready to bring that up, and I didn't know if I could okay. bring up the documentary or not because the last time yeah. we talked, you know, it wasn't. I guess it wasn't at a stage to where it could be uh, mentioned, but now I guess yeah. it's 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 about to be released. So yes, there's a documentary. Y'all, that's going on uh, that's about to be released about Ricky's life that is at, it's going to be fire. I mean, absolutely fire. And when it is released, we're going to have Ricky back on the show because we'll be able to show clips from it and promote it. So we're, we're going to make sure we do that. But um, it's, it's, it's hot. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's hot. Um, but that's what we do, man. Last night when you called me, I was working. Yeah. Stop working yeah. to do what we're going to do. Yeah. And, and again, I got to apologize for that too, man, because I know you trying to get stuff done, but you know, I, I, I don't want to be a distraction, but hey, I had to, you were the only person I could call it to help me with what I was trying to figure out. Well, that's Thank good. I, I feel important. <laughs> um, so just so everybody knows, your mic, your mic keeps going out a little bit, Rick, every now and then. I don't know what it is. It just it what pops. Thing? Yeah, you're. I can hear you now, but it's popping off okay. and coming back on. I don't know if it's because you know we get. I don't kinda, think I'm doing anything. It's plugged in. So. Yeah, yeah. Now it's fine. Now it's fine. I okay, don't know. Okay. Well, I'm not. Well, I'm not gonna pull it. I'm. I'm. Uh, it's just sitting here. Don't so sit. Don't sit still like like that. You look like a statue. <laughs> <man. laughs> Two. But before I mention that, I want to tell you something, Rick. We have a cat here, um, and when I'm doing the pregame analysis. We have a first yeah. round draft choice from Alabama. He's a receiver. His his oh, name wow. is Devontae Smith. He's the Heisman Trophy yeah. winner from last yeah, year. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's 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 a smooth cat, man. He um those those boys that come out of Alabama, they really are conditioned and prepared to step into the NFL and play at a high level because that program right. is that program's like it's like being yeah. I mean, they got guys all over the league, man, who are doing phenomenal out of Alabama. And the Heisman Trophy winner this year was out of Alabama. But, Correct. but uh, I say that <clears throat> because Devontae Smith uh, wears number six. Mm -hmm. So guess what I call him? What's that? Six dollars. No change. No change. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call him. That's funny. That, that funny. Hey, but that, that dude, man, that dude, he, he was very – very, very, he's a very talented young man. I mean, I watched him in college as well. And yeah, I think they yeah. named him the Slim Reaper or something. He yeah, the Slim man. Reaper. Yeah, <laughs> like Dave said, like Mac Jones, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like Mac hey. Jones. Yeah, but they you, call him the Slim Reaper. Like, yeah, they call you know, him. The I, say about, I say about those Alabama guys, man, they, they are well prepared when they come out of there. Mm. Yeah, they are. They are now. 
What I was going to say here, y'all, no, Richard just laughing. They laughing at us, uh, Rick. That's okay. Well, they laughing at us, yeah. <laughs> my, un- my uncle said, look, my uncle said, I don't go outside. People are dangerous. <laughs> yeah, well, we got a point. You know, like I said, it'd be something to think about. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to become a hermit. I'm not going to become, you know, I'm not going to not do what I need to do because because people are not acting like they have any sense of just you know unk, just protect yourself that's all um, yeah well I mean it, it, it's the difference between you know just being smart yeah more yeah. than anything and that's where I'm at I just try to be smart and uh, make good decisions and you know a lot of the stuff is really not in my control you know that's right a lot of it is in God's hands that's so right that's where I, it, and I have a strong faith so. it's all in his hands and when yeah, and when so we I, have yeah, and when have, we have faith yeah, I have it's faith. Every, yeah. yeah, when we have faith, it's it's gonna be all right. Everything's oh, gonna be. Oh, all I right. go wherever I need to go. There you go. Or, there you go. I go wherever yeah. I need to go. I pray and then I take off. So I was saying before you came on, Rick, about how uh, I was talking in reference to how Mike was supposed to be on the show and how you know something happened where it kind of distracts us or or deters us or could even dis- discourage us from moving forward. You know, I could have got on gotten on the show today and said, "Well, Mike's not going to be here. We're not going to have a show today." No, when you have when you have obstacles and you have hindrances like that, that just means to me, that just means you're on the right track. And, um, you know, we made some you and I made some decisions. I made some decisions about the new year. And uh, one of the things is, you know, with this this podcast and we're going to talk about the other podcast in a minute to do certain things. I want to start it out, start the year out. You know, we did. uh, We talked about New Year's resolutions last week. I want to start out this week with Mike. You know, great guest. We gonna chop it up. It was gonna be great, but it just didn't work. But I couldn't. Yeah. I can't get discouraged about it. I have to keep pressing forward. And I talked about right. how it equates to the red zone when we play ball. When you get to that red zone, that twenty yard line, yeah. man, it gets harder to yeah. score from there. And I wanted yeah, to. Strength. Yeah, yeah. And I wanted to encourage people to uh, to keep on going, to keep pressing, and just know that you're close to your goal. But the closer you get to your goal, the harder it is to get to your goal. So in reference to that, uh, one of the things I was talking about, everybody, was something that Ricky and I are embarking on this year. We're going to try to launch it. We're not going to try. Let me let me rephrase that. We're going to launch it uh, either right before or right after uh, the the college uh, spring game at Nebraska. It's going to be a new podcast called The Husker House. Yeah. And it's going to be co-hosted by Ricky and myself, and we're probably going to have one other guy. I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be Tommy Frazier, who's very popular out at Nebraska. We're going to do it uh, the same way we're doing this now. We'll do it from the studio. Ricky will be on, Tommy or whoever the other host will be on. We're going to do game analysis, pre-game analysis, post-game analysis. We'll have a show once a week uh, called The Husker House. And um, it's something that we're very excited about, and it's going to be focused on the football program at the University of Nebraska. Uh, we're going to have um, historical facts. We're going to have uh, current facts. We're going to have personal facts. Obviously, we're going to have current and former athletes from the University of Nebraska on the podcast. So it's something that we're excited about, and we wanted to announce that to everyone today. Um, but in regards to you know setting goals. And being determined to do certain things, regardless of the distractions or the deterrence that will come to try to hinder you, to keep you from reaching your goal. This is something that we're we're embarking on. This is something that we're going to do. I'm excited about it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, so you talk about it a little bit, Rick. What's, what, what do you, well, what do you, you know, what, I, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I think it's going to be great for the, the Nebraska fan base because Nebraska has a, one of the most dedicated fan bases of, in college football history. I mean, they they stick with the program through ups and downs, as we all witnessed. <laughs> and uh, I think a lot of, and they're very educated fans. So you can talk to them in a way that you can't talk to the average fan. I mean, they they understand men's losses. You know, they understand the truth about the sport. And that's mm-hmm. the one thing I like about them. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying they not diehards, but you know, <laughs> they, they have their opinions as well. And I get that. And I respect that, mm-hmm. but I think we're mm-hmm. going to be able to blend 
a lot of different mindsets together right. to educate people on you know what what it was and what it currently is i mean and that's important because sometimes you you know you hear former athletes like our like ourselves you'll give we'll give our old school opinion right yeah no and that old school opinion i mean we got to be honest with ourselves and say well the rules have changed right because what you and i used to love to do is illegal now <laughs> crack back baby yeah <laughs> we me and you used to keep score on that yeah that was a big part of our game because we weren't getting a whole bunch of passes so you better find some kind of way to entertain <laughs> crack back and run get behind Dave Remini a pretty good thing, you know, because when they were up, they wasn't happy. Right. But see, now illegal. See, so I have to, myself, you know, I, I have to look at football differently. Everything mm -hmm. I do about football, a lot of it is, is no longer uh, legal. Right. Well, we, we played old school ball. I was, I was just talking. Uh, we had Mike Quick on our show the other day, this past Tuesday, on our Green Legion show that we do during the week. And um, Mike Quick's former uh, NFL player with the uh, with the Eagles and does the uh, the game um, play by play, not play by play. He's the color guy with uh, on the radio with Merle Reese with W uh, WIP, and um, okay. was just talking about how you know, I asked him actually, you know, you see you see the athletes now they come on the sidelines and they have these pads, these iPads, and it's correct, and it's real time pictures it's real-time action on those ipads so i we could have run you and i could have been on the field and we ran a series of plays and we we were maybe we were three and out then two of those plays were passes and we ran our routes and the balls were incomplete for whatever reason and now we're back on the bench i can look at from a bird's eye view the defense and where that defensive back was in relationship to the, the route that i was running and where the other defensive backs were what the defense was doing in relationship to the route, the whole tree route that we were running as a play. And mm -hmm. instead of having to wait until Monday to come in and look at it on film and then try yeah. to remember and, you know, try to make the corrections on the field next week with the next team, I got it right now in front of me and I can go back on the field and manipulate that defensive back because I know what he's doing because I can see it from a bird's eye view. Man, do you know yep. what kind of advantage that is for a receiver? Oh, if I had yeah. something like that in real time when I was playing football, man, do you know what I could have done with that? How I could have manipulated uh, uh, defensive backs into doing, with much more ease, into doing what I wanted them to do and to place them where I wanted to place them so I could get open and catch the ball. So, yeah, in that regard as well, the game – has changed dramatically, man, and it's really, right. it's really an advantage because if because if you think about a defense coming on the sidelines and looking at the real time picture from a bird's eye view, it doesn't really help them that much. Why? Because you don't know where the receiver's going. I mean, you know what he did when he was out there, but you really, when he's running around or the running backs got the ball, you really don't know where he's planning on going mm -hmm. or where to try to go. But we know what we're trying to do and what we're trying to accomplish and where we're supposed to be. So it's really more of an advantage for the offensive player than it is for the defensive player. Because the offensive player does what he does on the field and the defensive player reacts to what the offensive player right. does on the field. Right. <laughs> so right. he can't do anything. The defense can't do anything till we do what we do. Correct. So, so man, that's, so, that's such a great uh, um, advantage for the offensive player. So, yeah, the game has changed dramatically, man. And I wish I wish we had that kind of stuff. But, yeah, that's those are the kind of things we're going to be talking about. Those are the kind of things we're going to be addressing. Current players, former players, the game itself. And, you mm -hmm. know, Nebraska, the University of Nebraska, is in a transition uh, stage right now where they're making some changes in the coaching staff and philosophy and all that kind of stuff is going on right now. So I think this is a perfect time for us to launch our uh, podcast and to g gain the interest and the attention of the Husker Nation, so to speak, and, um, you know, take advantage of this situation that we can get on the air and create our own little show and uh, make some noise. Make some, so I'm excited oh, about it. Man. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it as well because I think it's something that I know is, is needed 
because a different perspective other than what we've grown accustomed to mm-hmm. sometimes mm-hmm. is very helpful you right. know and i'm not saying that we're right and everybody else is wrong i don't mean it that way at all i just think it's a different way to look at it when you have actually played it you know, played the game, right? And right. you you understand things that a lot of people take for granted. Mm-hmm. And I don't I, mean. I don't see anything like this with regards to the University of Nebraska. I've been searching mm-hmm. the, the the virtual you know Facebook and YouTube and all that. I've been searching it. I don't see anything like it. So you're right. It's an opportunity for us to voice. Uh, and if nothing else, listen, we're gonna have fun. <laughs> we, oh yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna, gonna have some fun. I'm yeah, gonna be on. I know we're gonna have some fun. fun because see, fun is first. Me, that's, yeah, that to me, I mean, that goes into my whole being. I, I just love to be happy. Or, I, you know, I was just going to ask you, get your, get, yeah. go ahead and tell folk that's the T-shirt you have on. Let oh, me ask yeah, you a question, though. That. Let yeah, me ask you a question. Do they come in purple, man? Can you? Can you? Can I get one in purple? We working on that because I already <laughs> knew you were coming with that. We working on that. Come on, but man. You know, we, we just launched, man. It ain't even been a month. <laughs> And we're just we just launched this, and we're trying to we're trying to get the word out. But we're definitely going to switch it up and okay. add more and more to it. We got a store, an online store. Okay. That we're just, we're going to continue to add to. All right. I'm just right now. This is our our first one, and we're just trying to see what the what the feel is like. Uh, basically, get your happy on is is a is a mindset and a lifestyle all wrapped into one. Right. Right. Uh, and the, and the the whole it's like a I call it a get your happy on movement, and it's basically I want people on a daily basis for no reason at all just to find a way to be happy. Yeah, I mean because to me society has done a wonderful job of covering negativity. They're just all over it. So I would like to throw something in the mix that would be just the opposite, something right. positive. You know, and positive, it's not, you know, I don't, I know positive doesn't get the attention or the coverage that negativity gets. I get that, but it still doesn't stop me from trying. And that's all we're doing. So that's why I say, yes, your, your purple is coming. Uh Uh-oh. And you you know, I'm going to put it on, bro. And I'm going to get, listen, as soon as I get it on, I'm making a video. I'm going to send it to you. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, WMK. I, I, you know, WMK said they're watching watching in Omaha. I'll what's up, that. WMK? <laughs> I know y'all up there doing big things, man. I'm gonna see y'all on Monday. I guarantee it. I will. I just want to say thank you, man, for all the work y'all are putting in on this doc, man. Because uh, I just got a good feeling that this is gonna it's gonna help change, and that's that's the most important thing. It's gonna happen, man. It's gonna happen. Well, Rick, we out of time, bro. I knew I knew the half hour. I should have brought you in earlier. I knew the half hour was going to yeah. go fast. Well, let me say this before I go, too, man. Um, you trying I'm to take over? You. What, what, you trying to take over my show? No, I'm I'm trying to say something that, that needs to be said. <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of you, man. <laughs> Thank I'm you, proud of you. Because I appreciate bro, you, bro. You you, you done came a long way with the technology. I ain't there yet, but I'm working on it. So thank you for having me on. Listen, I ain't look. I ain't got it right yet. You watch some of my other shows and see me messing up. Oh, no. <laughs> but if you really want to hurt your rating, put me in that chair you in. <laughs> That's what to do. That's what to do. You, man, what happened to that? What happened to the fryer place, man? Hey, it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Let me Rick get that man. He don't know how to turn nothing on. He don't know how to do nothing. Oh Lord, uh, th- what that's what's going to happen with the Husker House. I'll be here. We're actually, it, and this this is how great technology is. We'll be able to do the Husker yeah. House. You'll be where you are. I'll be where I am, and our other hosts will be wherever they are, and we'll be able to do most of the shows that way. Now we are going to do some mobile uh, broadcasts where we're actually probably going to have to be in Nebraska. There is again, as I mentioned to you yes uh, last night, Rick. There is a, um, and they don't own the name, but there is a restaurant, and I had a great idea that uh, there's a restaurant just outside of Omaha that's called the Husker House. So uh, we we can promote the Husker House and actually do maybe do a live show from the Husker House. That'd be yeah. that'd be nice, yeah. right Partner there. With the yeah, man. I'm with that. Yeah. I'm with that. Yeah, and hopefully they'll be with that because you know it should be good for business as well. Yes, yes, brother Malazim, what's up? How you doing? Greetings to you too as well. 
All right. All right, Anthony. You still a positive show, Reverend. Keep up the good work. Thank you, uh, Squid. <laughs> His name is Squid. <laughs> That's what we call him, Squid. What's up, Witch? <laughs> all right. We out of here, y'all. Um, that's my brother right there, Ricky Simmons. Hey, look, say RickyCSimmons.com, man. Go get your shirt on. Support the movement. Ricky get C. Simmons. Happy, <laughs> Something happened to my mic, man. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with my mic here. Let me see what's going on here. I can hear you just fine, young man. Yeah, I know, but it changed. Maybe it's maybe it's my headset. It's my headset. My headset okay. started coming out of my ears because it sounded like my, my mic was like, I couldn't hear the bass in my voice. I sounded like a little girl. What? No, nah, we ain't gonna let you do that. Nah. <laughs> v. Clyde, v. Clyde, thank you, bro. I appreciate you. Yep. Listen, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have. I think I'm gonna have Mike back on next week. So, okay. and I know he's not watching right now. So we're gonna surprise yeah. him next week, y'all. I, I, I had planned on having Ricky come in at the same time he came in as a buffer for me and Mike because we need a buffer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, absolutely. Yeah, we need somebody to buffer us. Um, so I figured by the time we were going for about a half an hour that we need somebody to come in and uh, intervene. And so I planned on bringing Ricky in about 30 minutes into the show to uh, not just surprise Mike, but to help me. <laughs> hey, I got you. Don't even worry about it. Just so, let me know. Yeah, so I'll let you know. And we might we might bring you back in next week uh, about halfway through a surprise Mike. <laughs> That's what's up, man. I'll be waiting to hear from you. All right, bro. God bless you. Love you, man. Uh -huh. Love you too, my dude. Stay All in right. touch. Yes, sir. You got it. All right, later. Later. All right, y'all. That was good. We had a good time. Um, listen, we're going to here's one of the things we're gonna start. Good to see everybody. Uh Keenan, yeah, uh, he said, I'm happy every day. Let me throw it up there. I'm happy every day for no reason except being here, and that is enough. It's easy to be happy. It's tough to be disgruntled and angry and and neg negative all the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's be positive. Very positive show, Irvin. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you next. You you out, Chuck? Uncle Chucky says he's out. I'm not. I haven't left yet. Wait a second. <laughs> So, so yeah, we're going to be doing something that's going to be dealing with real people, real talk. You guys, you all who are watching, real people, real talk. And uh, so what I want you to do, um, and we're going to have some rewards for this. Um, haven't determined what they are yet, but you're not just doing this just to do this. We're going to give you something. Um, but what I want you to do is I want you to, those of you who have a story or you feel you have a story, I want you to to email us here at the Friar Place. All right, email us. I'm trying to get the the Friar Place to come up on. Where is it? All right, there it goes. No, it's not. All right, no, it's not. <laughs> it. Uh, all right, there it goes. Email us here at the Friar Place. Oh Lord, it went off. There it goes again. <laughs> I told he Ricky said I know what I'm doing. Uh the Friar Place at gmail.com. Mm. <laughs> Elder Webb, you're a, you're a clown, man. You are. Good show. Enjoyed it. Now going to take a nap, Reverend Smurf. <laughs> he calls me Pastor Smurf Smurf, not Reverend Smurf. <laughs> Mr. Smarty. <laughs> anyway, listen, you have a story you want to tell? Uh, testimony that you want to give, give us a short synopsis of that. Write us here, send the email, or you can send a PDF with a document, a PDF document uh, to the Friar Place at gmail.com. We're going to be reading your, your, your stories, your testimonies, and we're going to be choosing people. We'll let you know if we cho chose you or if we choose you. We're going to be choosing people to be on the show. Uh, real people, real talk. So if you have a story you want to tell, which everybody does, everybody's story needs to be told, email us here at the Friar Place, the Friar Place at gmail.com. It's right there going across the screen, the Friar Place at gmail.com. Tell us what your story is. Make sure you, in your um, email, 
Um, make sure you put your contact information in there so we can contact you if we choose you as one of the people who will be on our session or on our show when we have Real Talk with Real People. We're going to have that, uh, have guests on like yourself once a month with Real Talk, Real People. All right? That's something we want to do, something we're launching, something we want to uh, to create, to expand our show, and to get you more involved, and to hear your stories. Yeah, people, people need to hear your stories, how you've dealt with life, the trials and the tribulations that you've had to overcome, how you made it to the other side, how God has kept you. Yes, everybody has a story. Real talk, real people. Okay. All right. Shout out. Uh, Alicia Way, thank you for these dope overlays. Shout out to Lou Rogers, Vision Audio Visual. Uh, we had a video of Mike Rozier today, but we didn't show it because Mike's not here. We will show it next week. We're going to have Mike on next week. Please like, please share the fireplace. That's what's going to help grow this podcast, the fireplace. Like it and share it. Shout out to uh, Raymond Forbay. No escape gear. Don't have it on today, but we thank the brother for supplying us with some no escape gear. You can go to his website, noescapegear.com. Raymond Forbay, God bless you. I think that's going to do it for us. Listen, stay safe. Stay safe. Wear your mask. Socially distance. Take care of yourself. Um, wash your hands. Be careful. This Omicron variant is no joke. We're going to be back next week. Mike Rozier, Heisman Trophy winner, straight out of Camden, New Jersey. Until then, y'all, God bless you, and we'll see you later. Make sure you love one another, and like Ricky said, get your happy on. <laughs>